Hi everyone, Rocio here with Sparkling Punk and Rocio Jimenez Cosplay. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. Um, so today I am going to set up my booth for Sparkling Punk at Hill Country Comic Con 2022. I am so excited. I got the day off. Um, I am setting up as soon as they open. They open at 8 a.m. Currently it's 7, 12 in the morning. We're gonna go get some McDonald's and then we're gonna go ahead and head over to New Brothels to check in. I am super excited about this and it's gonna be such an absolutely amazing uh, day and just, I, I haven't really been able to sleep because I'm so excited. So I'm so ready. Let's go and get over to New Brothels for the setup. We're about to load up my car. We were able to borrow one of their dollies that we think we might be able to do everything in one go, but we will see. Hopefully it'll make our life easier. Alrighty, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a voiceover, but I decided to do one. We did end up getting everything on the dolly, as y'all can see. Well, almost any everything, but all of the big stuff, it made our um, set up way faster. This actually ended up taking us four hours instead of six in comparison to last time. As you can see, I'm getting pretty much everything down from the dolly first because I know other people are going to get here very soon to go ahead and set up as well. And it was a very useful dolly for us, so I want to make sure to get that out of the way. The first thing I tend to do with my booth setup is I go ahead and I set up all of my tablecloths. I used to have regular tablecloths, but I ended up upgrading to these that are like fit but they're not fitted. They're fitted in a way that's not um, like elastic, you know, to like 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 a spandex. They're not spandex. They're just kind of a six by uh, six by um, a six foot, you know, type one, and then it goes slips right over. They work great, and especially if they, there's another tablecloth on there that you can't remove, they're really great for that too, and for wind. Um, we did go ahead and set up my canopy. I loved having my canopy back. This canopy definitely makes my boots set up. It was inspired by my friend um, Kawaii Art Cafe's uh, canopy, and I just, I loved the idea. She was more than happy to know, to share the information on, um, you know, how she made her canopy, but I actually ended up finding a YouTube video on how to make it, and then I ended up tweaking it and making my own. People always constantly ask me um, who made my canopy, and I'm like, I did, <laughs> uh, because I pretty much make everything from my booth. I even spray painted the PPC and all that myself too. So we did end up using my new rack, which is super cool. I love it so much. It was really awesome. And it was also great to be able to set up my uh, logo, my little sign, because at market events, it is so hard to go ahead and set it up because of the wind. And I don't have the canopy to go ahead and hold it. You know, you have to accommodate so much for outdoor events, and I do mention that in my previous video on Sparkling Punk's uh, YouTube channel, which, depending on which YouTube channel you're watching, it might be my previous video. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with YouTube videos right now. It's pretty hectic right now on my YouTube channels. Um, but I sometimes like to bring over these types of YouTube videos over to Rocio Jimenez Cosplay because this is part of my life. And on Rocio Jimenez Cosplay, I do share about my life. But this is also conventions and I do end up cosplaying uh, when I do Artist Alley. I cosplay at least once during my artist alley journey. So we were having some trouble setting up the little banner um, <laughs> because of how tight it is, but we ended up finally getting it. I was just pretty much setting it up all the way down at the bottom, making sure that it was nice and straight. As you can see, it like was curled before, and then I ended up using fishing line to go ahead and tie in the grommets. I always recommend getting a um, banner with grommets. It's a little bit extra, but definitely go ahead and check out Banner Buzz. They have a very affordable banner. This little banner, I think, 
only cost me like $15 or something like that definitely recommend it i am clothing my little mannequin so happy i ended up getting her um she was a little more expensive uh she was like 35 dollars because she was you know in black instead of like the nude but i wanted the black because it went with my theme i also ended up getting this other little like drying rack to do halters and t-shirts and i am going to be making shorts in the future so i did end up putting shorts in the back i have only made a medium pair so far so i haven't really announced it because of that i had so many skirts i had 55 skirts to hang uh technically 54 because one of them was on my mannequin i do end up going and adding a matching ghost skirt and people thought it was a dress which um it's not a dress but it, it definitely gives the feel of a dress you know if you get the halter top and the skirt definitely looks a lot like the dress um so if you're ever wondering if you can get a dress for me i do not make dresses i have actually had a couple people um ask me for commissions on dresses but that's something i just don't make i stick to making halter tops skirts and now like i said i'm dabbling into shorts i'm slowly dabbling into d different things but i mainly only dabble into things that i have interest in and i know that i will be happy and satisfied making because there is some things that i have tried making and ah uh, they're not fun to make. Um, the way I run my business is I create anything that brings me joy. That is why I run my business, not only for money. Um, if we want to be honest, I am technically not making money right now. Um, I make money, but I haven't even broke even yet. And I don't pay myself yet. So I, I really don't make any money yet. I don't ever take money out of my business for personal use. I don't ever deduct it as a paycheck. Um, I did my first art trade at this convention and that was pretty much it, but mm, I didn't, I, yeah, didn't require me to take out money. I used uh, one skirt right in trading for a shirt uh, mainly because the artist wanted to get a skirt for his wife and I was happy with his products as well so it was a nice little art trade but um, yeah in case anybody was wondering I'm not officially making money back yet um, I still have about eight thousand dollars more to break even and um, I don't know when I will officially be getting a paycheck for myself <laughs> but yeah so I was taking a bunch of pictures, TikToks and all that. Um, as a content creator and a small business owner, you constantly have to be recording your entire process. We did go ahead and I made new signs with my sizing. I updated my sizing to go ahead and reflect with uh, the stretch because I did make videos on my Sparkling Punk Instagram and my TikTok pretty much stating how my skirt sizing works with it being stretched and unstretched. I found out that my full stretched uh, 4XL skirt actually stretches all the way to like 80 inches or it might be 83 inches, something like that. But uh, it definitely allows me to go ahead and you know provide a huge variety of sizes um which i am so happy about you know that was one of my biggest goals in 2020 um i'm sorry in 2021 but yeah i also went ahead and i got these little plastic hat displays and as you can see um, my boyfriend nathan is just kind of setting up the grids i do end up doing pictures and mock-up um, drawings before I go to a convention especially and he's kind of going off of that my phone is right in front of him and it's showing him how each product is laid out some things I do have to correct because I it's just a mock-up so I know how it's pictured you know this is why I always say you know I don't think I could ever hire um, someone to officially help me because I'm a very very like neat organization freak and I definitely would crack at someone I have cracked before at one of my friends um, she has called me out on it and I'm very grateful that she did put me in check you know I am all about being uh, true don't be cookie cutter type with me be straight up honest I prefer brutally honest um, type deal because that's how I am so um, I really appreciate her for that but she now she knows you know like I, I get overwhelmed and very stressed, but I ended up getting these little hat stands. They were great. Um, I wanted to find a different way to actually display my hats and not just have them laid down my on my table. So I displayed my witch hats and I also displayed my berets. I had six berets and I actually sold out almost completely. I was only left with a jack o lantern beret and a... Um, a Frankenberry, but which you will see in the Artist Alley vlog coming up, but like they worked great and it, people really liked the way it was displayed. My witch hats though, like 
I don't know. I, I feel like some of them looked a little bit funky. Like if you look at the Franken hat one, it kind of looks a little bit weird, but they worked. They did the job and it, they, you know, showed the length of the actual um, hats, which I really liked. And I also ended up getting this tub at Austin Creative Reuse. I love Austin Creative Reuse. It's, imagine a Goodwill, but for artists, uh, it's pretty much that. It's super awesome. And a lot of the time, it's a bunch of products that people didn't end up using. Um, and sometimes like scraps. And if you know me, I'm all about using scraps. So I went ahead and I got that little orange bin where I put the plushies. I used one of my acrylic stands, kind of stand them up in there and kind of organize them the way they were. Um, I do have so many little products. So if you can see, I actually transport a lot of my stuff in little totes. I used to put these little totes in suitcases, but the suitcases actually were taking up more space in my car than I thought. So I ended up just leaving them in little totes and transport them little by little. I honestly don't mind. I have so many little items on top of my clothing. My clothing, I decided to do it a different way this year. And I ended up getting one of those like big tubs with the rope handles. I don't know if you grew up, but I'm a 90s kid and well 90s baby and at the parties the family always had like these heavy duty tubs with rope handles they don't make them heavy duty anymore like just gonna call that out there but I found one at Walmart and it was like ten dollars and I ended up getting it and I decided I'm gonna put all my skirts on hangers and then just go ahead and like put them in sizing from smallest to largest and that's how i started putting my stuff up on my rack um because they were already on hangers already in sizes with pockets facing up so i was able to quickly finish that part honestly i will say having the giant dolly at the beginning and then having um that bin already ready with hangers and stuff saved us so much time i'm pretty sure that's why we saved two hours on this setup alone because we had the big dolly and because we had skirts on hangers already because that takes us forever so i was really grateful about that i told people on tiktok that i was going to keep them posted on how that worked i am definitely going to tell them that it worked amazing because i definitely recommend it whether it's putting the skirts already prepared in a tote or you know hanging your shirts whatever you're selling clothing wise on your hangers already and putting them in order format in a way that's going to be super easy to hang them totally recommend it as you can see i'm kind of shuffling around things but i also want to show you all the process of how I made my boyfriend go ahead and put up the stickers. I had already had everything, you know, laid out for him. So he's pretty much just putting up all the stickers and I make sure that my items aren't like popping off of the um the hangers i'm a little ocd so i am all about you know symmetry and making sure that everything is perfectly straight and stuff like that as you can see i'm straightening out my little mystery boxes and also they had to be like centered and i had to like make sure that um my tags were, were taped down and all of that i'm organizing some little hair bows i almost completely sold out of these little hair bows there was a lady that actually ended up buying like five of them and i was like oh my goodness so i definitely need to make more hair bows um it, it was a pretty crazy event but yeah um i did also have a clearance bin so i went ahead and i moved over all of my clearance bin stuff into like a nice little spooky bin also a bin that i found at austin creative reuse it's funny because they randomly get like halloween stuff and there isn't many halloween year round businesses especially like spooky cute ones like i am anytime people see my inventory or my booth people say that it's very unique because people make i feel like very horror type esque um booth setups maybe but not so much spooky cute like my my style is definitely specific like the stitching on my hats the stitching on my berets like people tell me that they really like my messy stitching and it's funny because to some it might look like oh maybe a little kid did that no but it's actually my style um the stitching that you see on my hats and on my berets is on purpose i i just like that kind of stitching as you can see i'm like directing him you know i'm like all right we need to do this this and this i can be a little bit of a bomb I'm not gonna lie because I like things to be perfect and I'm a bit of a neat freak I'm gonna say it time and time again if someone ends up leaving my booth you know and, and something gets slightly off after they leave I end up organizing it again it's not because I'm rude or anything I honestly like it'll bug me <laughs> it really would um I just like things to be straight um 
And this year we also decided to go ahead and do lights. So I ended up buying these magnetic lights that are motion sensor lights. They're technically supposed to be for like the kitchen or for like your um, closet. And I decided to go ahead and give them a go for a outdoor market that I had to go ahead and use the magnet feature for my canopy and it worked really well. So I ended up buying six of them and I recall last year at Hill Country, my booth, as you can see, like under the canopy, it looks kind of dark. So I ended up getting these string lights and the string lights didn't work that well. Like they didn't light up enough and they were yellow. And if you know me, I hate yellow lighting. I think yellow lighting is disgusting. I am so sorry. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> Mainly because I feel like it gives the skin tone a really weird um, look and I don't I don't like that yellowy look it gives the skin tone. Um, especially me being tan, it like gives me this even more yellow pigmented like like it looks like I got a really bad tan which I have a really beautiful skin tone so I'm like please white lighting like we need to just have like normal lighting so if you ever go into my office I have white lighting everywhere I also have two ring lights on all the time so I have a lot of like white light just bang all over the place my letter board was being a B I'm gonna say that right now there's a little dot that is supposed to go between sparkling punk dot Calm, and it did not want to be on there and I just took it off but so these are the lights I was talking about um, we did turn them on just full blown instead of motion sensor and we just duct tape them we duct tape half of it to the PVC and it worked it, it balanced out um, like towards the end of the day one started drooping but like it wasn't to the point where it would fall at all and it has the feature of either being motion sensor or you could just turn it on all the way and we turned it on we had it on from 9 30 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm not yeah 9 30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and they stayed on the entire time and they had like a battery life of like six hours if they were full blown on or seven hours like that and I was like dang these lasted longer right I think that's longer it was pretty insane they didn't really look dim or anything because we compared them to some you know fully powered ones I had and I was I was shocked they were a really good investment they were a bit expensive but really good investment we also wrapped around these little spider web lights correction not spider web these little spider lights um that my boyfriend normally puts up in his office during uh Halloween but he ended up letting me borrow them from my booth I always also have these little jack-lantern lights that I ended up getting on Amazon love them but we did notice something and this happened last year at Hill Country they randomly turned off sorry I'm being weird on the camera um I was like dancing around for a little bit as always but anyway uh they randomly like turned off like midway through the show and then we noticed with the batteries and they randomly turned back on later on and we we're like what do are they overheating or something maybe that's why they turned off so the first day we ended up throwing away the batteries and then we realized that they were probably just overheated now i'm just packing stuff up and that's pretty much it i hope this kind of helped you all figure out you know booth setup if you are figuring out how to do a booth setup this is my only my second time vending at a con and i but enough about that let's go on to the reveal so y'all can see how my booth came out overall
I just finished setting up for Hill Country Comic Con. I am so excited. I'm going to be vlogging uh, first day and second day as well. So this is just setup day. I hope y'all enjoyed this little artist alley type video. Um, like I said, I'm going to be recording the other days as well, but I hope y'all enjoyed it. I had so much fun doing this setup and it's so much bigger than the first booth I ever had at a convention. So I'm really excited and I'm just so glad that I can provide such a large selection in sizing when it comes to skirts now. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to go ahead and check out sparklingpunk.com, um, my social media for Sparkling Punk. And if you're watching this or see who this cosplay, make sure to go ahead and check out all my social media there too. All right, I will talk to y'all later. Bye.